Manx Radio's update with Lewis Foster. Fast am I. Good evening. It's five o'clock on Monday, the 19th of August. The week starts here. Welcome along to update your daily roundup of news on and from the Isle of Man today. Coming up in the next half hour, the coroner of inquests has asked the Department of Home Affairs and Manx Care to look at 12 issues following the death of inmates at the Isle of Man prison. Police have issued a warning after two people entered closed roads during the MGP and plans have been approved for a new 64-bed hotel in Douglas. We'll also keep you posted on anything to watch out for travel-wise and as ever, your thoughts always welcome. You can text 166-177 or email studio at manxradio.com. First of all, let's join Siobhan Fletcher for the headlines. Faster my, Siobhan. Faster my, Lewis. Manx Care has been asked to take action and change the way medical records can be shared across silos of the health system. The coroner of inquests has written to the health body, saying he believes there is a risk that arises from medical staff not having full access to a patient's record when prescribing drugs. Winds on the island this afternoon are expected to reach up to 50 miles per hour. The Department of Environment, Food and Agriculture says combined with the bad weather, it's expecting it to cause some damage to trees. It's strongly advising people to be extra careful, especially if planning on using the forests and glens this week. And a reminder, there will be no road closure tonight around the mountain course. Today's Manx Grand Prix qualifying session has been cancelled because of that weather. Meanwhile, further afield, Italian authorities are searching off the coast of Sicily after a luxury yacht owned by a British entrepreneur and registered here on the Isle of Man, capsized in a storm. Mike Lynch is one of six people unaccounted for, while his wife is among several who were rescued early this morning. A a 22-year-old man's been arrested after a triple stabbing in Manchester, left one woman dead and two people seriously injured. It happened in Gorton. People... Police believe the suspect knew the victims. And it's the first day of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Kamala Harris is expected to formally accept the party's nomination there later this week. And there are your headlines. I'll be back with your news at six. Guramayad, thank you, Siobhan. Now the weather brought to you by Manx Glass and Glazing. Wet and windy with outbreaks of rain and drizzle at times, clearing this evening, although a few showers are still possible overnight. The strong to gale force southerly wind will veer southwest and ease as the last of the rain clears through. Minimum temperature overnight of 12 degrees. There's also a risk of some minor overtopping of waves along Peel Promenade tonight. Tomorrow, we'll see a mixture of sunny intervals and scattered showers, most likely in the afternoon and evening. Still feeling quite breezy with fresh to strong west or southwest winds, best temperature of 18 degrees. Then cloudy but dry at first on Wednesday. Rain then arrives late morning or early afternoon, clearing later in the day. The fresh west wind will back southwest and strengthen in the afternoon, top temperature of 16 degrees. Sunset tonight at 8.39 and sunrise tomorrow morning at 6 minutes past 6. Manx Glass and Glazing can supply and install single, double and triple glazing. Call 674 573 or visit the showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. TE Cubbon provide new memorial stones, grave renovations, new inscriptions and fire hearths. Visit us at Hope Street Castle Town or at Broadway Douglas or call 844-440. TE Cubbon, here when you need Ambitions Recruitment Consultants, covering all business sectors in the Isle of Man. Register online or email your CV to info at ambitions.co.im or ring 614 841. Ambitions, for all your recruitment needs, however big or small. We all need peace of mind. That's where Peace of Mind Manx Will Writing Services can help you. From just £149 plus VAT. Call 671-001 or go to peaceofmind.co.im. I am. Most builders start with a hammer and saw. Manx Construction start with ideas and imagination. For new build, extension or home office, Manx Construction offer full service from planning to completion. Call Tony on 452 688. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. The time now approaching five past five and the coroner of inquests has asked the Department of Home Affairs and Manx Care to look at 12 issues following the death of inmates at the Isle of Man prison. 
Graham Cook presided over the inquests of Craig Anderson and Christopher Corkill earlier this year. News editor Tessa Hawley joins me in the studio now. Tessa, you followed both of these cases. So what has the coroner asked for? So you might remember last month us talking in some depth about the inquest into the death of Christopher Corkill. He died in February last year in his cell at the Isle of Man prison and his death followed that of fellow inmate Craig Anderson back in November 2022. Both had taken their own lives. Following Mr Corkill's inquest, Coroner of Inquest Graham Cook indicated that he'd be considering whether to make a report to the authorities which have the power to prevent future similar deaths from happening. And he has now done that. So what has he asked of the Department of Home Affairs and Manx Care? Well, the coroner says it's not his role to recommend the actual action that should be taken to prevent future death. Those decisions, the coroner says, must be taken by the authorities themselves. However, he says after considering all of the evidence over the two inquests, he thinks there are 12 points that the department and the health body may wish to consider. The coroner has said he believes certain improvements have already been made by the prison service and Manx Care. So what other things is he recommending are reviewed? So effectively, he's of the opinion that the recommendations made already by His Majesty's Inspectorate of Prisons and the Prison and Probation's Ombudsman Service should be implemented. He also wants a dedicated clinical governance lead responsible for prison health care, improved access to mental health professionals and mental health provision in the facility, and that's alongside treatments such as CBT and DBT, medication reviews for new prisoners, peer support and for regular inspections to be carried out by HMIP. Obviously, these deaths have been quite high profile due to them happening at the prison and then going through the court process. So where can people find out more about these cases? So tomorrow night on Manx Radio, there'll be an Island Life special called Death in Custody. Now, it looks at this subject in depth and I've spoken to the prison governor and Manx Care's deputy chief executive and director of nursing and governance at length. That will air at 5.30pm on Tuesday and there'll be a podcast available after broadcast so you can listen again at your leisure. Tessa Hawley, Gurumayad, thank you. The time now at seven and a half minutes past five. Police say anyone accessing a closed road this Manx Grand Prix will end up in a police cell. It's after two people were arrested yesterday for entering Glen Crutchery Road while it was closed during a red flag in the qualifying session. Inspector Paul Kemp says officers are still trying to operate business as usual during the festival. Our daily business is busy with all sorts of crimes that get reported to us, so the teams over the weekend have been extremely busy, but not with MGP-related stuff. However, that said, our traffic guys have been out there as well, doing a lot of good work this weekend as well, trying to make the roads safer. And you'll have seen on their feeds that they've been seizing cars, and they've got to do those sorts of things. And yes, there is an argument that what about the rest of the year? Well, actually, we are out there doing it the rest of the year. It's just that we're trying to make a bit of a point at the moment. These cars are unroadworthy. We need them away from the road because the next thing is they hit a motorcyclist, etc., etc. So yeah, but business as usual for us is busy. And I've just looked at the daily log for today and what's ahead of the day team CID, protecting vulnerable people departments and and all those areas are busy today. Obviously, we've got other things as well from the MGP. So last night there were or yesterday afternoon, there were two people arrested for uh, entering closed roads. If a bike skittles you, it's then going to take out people in the crowd and killing other people as well. On the very, very basic level, you're going to really annoy everybody around you because somebody's going to have to deal with you rather than let the racing go ahead. The bottom line is you're on a closed road, you're causing a danger to everybody else. Unfortunately, you're going to find yourself in a police cell. In terms of road safety, there's one message I'm going to repeat. Is the difference of the mountain road for MGP than it is for TT? This is something we've got to remind people of, isn't it? Absolutely. So it's two ways, and it's important that everybody remembers that it's two way. What we don't want is anybody on the wrong side of the road thinking that it's one way. It is clearly signposted, but people, when they're excited, might not see that. And also local residents as well may not be completely aware so we just need to keep reminding everybody and we've got the added problem as well and it's really unfortunate the weather isn't looking great either that is going to add that's not going to reduce anybody's workload for myself and Oliver's teams it's going to actually increase it you just need to be driving that much more carefully an important reminder there from inspector Paul Kemp from the Isle of Man Constabulary 
Now, a prominent building in what's described as the gateway to the Isle of Man will soon become a 64-bed hotel. Plans to convert Royalty House on Walpole Avenue, close to the sea terminal in Douglas, have today been approved. Sean Cowper reports. The building on the corner of Walpole Avenue is a prominent landmark in the capital. Its Art Deco-style design is a hark back to the former Royalty Cinema on the site. The current building has been used as office space since it was built in 1998, but it's said now that finding tenants for the space has proved a challenge. The applicant is Keith Lord, the owner of the Manning Hotel in Douglas. He and his company Hesketh Investments Limited are also behind a project to demolish and redevelop the former Salvation Army Citadel building on Lord Street into a 44-bed hotel. There were questions from the planning committee about the impact the development would have on parking in the area. The conversion of the ground floor into a restaurant-slash-bar area would result in the loss of 13 indoor parking spaces on the site. But Mr Lord's agent, speaking at the meeting of the planning committee today, argued the location itself was sustainable, given its close proximity to the sea terminal and major bus routes. Coach tours are expected to be a key customer base too, so it was agreed the need for parking would be redundant. Committee members commented that it's common for hotels in the UK to not have any parking provision. As for the building itself, the plan is to create 64 bedrooms, a mix of double and twin rooms and a number of executive suites. An extension will also be added on top, creating a rooftop spa facility and plant room. This extension, the case officer said, you wouldn't see from Street View. It's hoped overall the new hotel will create 18 jobs with an average salary of £30,000. Commenting on the application, members said it would be great for the island, great for Douglas. Committee Chair Rob Callister, MHK, said it would be great for businesses in an area which is a gateway to the Isle of Man. The plans were approved unanimously. Sean Cowper with the news there of a new hotel for Douglas. Well, what do you think about that? Perhaps you remember the old cinema there. Let us know your thoughts on 166177 or email studio at manxradio.com. 12 minutes past five now. Manx Care can't promise there won't be capacity issues in Noble's emergency department this Manx Grand Prix. It's after racing at the Southern 100 last month was cancelled on one of the days because the hospital was dealing with a series of urgent admissions. Executive Director of Health Services Oliver Radford says he's hopeful there won't be any issues though. It's always difficult to mitigate for that because um, the issues that we experience during Southern 100 was essentially a a very, very unusually busy day in in ED. Added on was the incident at the Southern 100, which resulted in two major traumas coming into ED at the same time. So that just took us to a, a point that we couldn't be able to safely manage anything else. I can't say hand on heart that that will never happen again because first and foremost, our priority is is for caring for the patients that are in ED at the time. And if there's anything that we can do to try and reduce the risk, that might be asking for a race to be delayed or in an extreme circumstances, asking for the race to be curtailed. But, you know, I've, I've been leading on the health response to TT and Grand Prix for about eight years. That's the first time that we've ever had to do it. So it was extremely unusual kind of circumstances, but we're hopeful during, during Grand Prix through our planning, through our additional staff being brought in, that we won't end up in that situation again. Generally, our preparations for, for Grand Prix are, are very similar to the TT. We don't actually bring as many additional staff over for the Grand Prix, but we do bring additional staff in those areas that are most affected, so principally the ambulance service and the emergency department. So we have around six additional paramedics over from the UK they are increasing the number of ambulances that we have on duty and also supplementing the command staff because we have um, a number of additional command roles. So we have an ambulance officer within the race tower during race periods. We've got the helicopter, Alpha 99, which is used mainly for when the roads are closed, accessing those difficult to reach areas of the island. And um, we generally have an additional three registered nurses on in, in ED throughout the Grand Prix just to deal with not only traumas that come in through race incidents or open roads incidents but just the fact that we've got an additional 15,000 people on the island you're listening to the isle of man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup update on manx radio 
Taking a look at the business news now, a restaurant in Douglas has announced it's closing its doors after 14 years. 14 North on North Quay says its final service will take place on Saturday. People with restaurant bookings for after this date will be contacted in the coming days. A post on Facebook from the business reads, A new chapter awaits, which we hope to share with you soon. The stock market report now brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European stocks extended positive momentum at the start of the new trading week after global markets rallied last week. Gold eased after powering to an all-time high above the important $2,500 per ounce level in the last session on strong safe haven demand and expectations of an imminent US rate cut as investors seek more cues on the quantum of cuts. It's down 0.11% to $2,504 now. Oil eased, with global benchmark Brent holding below $80 a barrel, down 0.48% to $79.21 to be exact. This following concern over demand in top oil imported China weighed on market sentiment, offsetting risks to supply in the Middle East. Now markets at the close, the FTSE 100 up 0.63% to 8,363. The DAX up 0.60 to 18,431. And a short time ago, the Dow Jones up 0.47% to 40,851. The S&P 500 up 0.36% to 5,574. The Nasdaq up 0.36% to 17,574. And British pound sterling trading at 1.298 US dollars and 1.173 euros. I'm running late again. Do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog basket. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Crook all later? Oh, uh, no, of, of course not. Um, 5 p.m., is it? Quarter to three. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. Oh. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit RamseyCrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. <laughs> Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Well, first thing to say about the roads is that the Snaefell Mountain course won't be closing this evening. It was due to shut for the second night of Manx Grand Prix qualifying, but that has been cancelled. Look out the window and you'll understand why. Really poor weather on the island this evening. An update on tomorrow's schedule is due to be issued at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, look around the island in Mackled. Jack's Lane is closed for ditching works in Sandergate. Temporary lights are in place to the east of the village on the Sandergate Road, 24 hours a day for work on the pavements. In Glen May, a stretch of the Arisey Road is closed for resurfacing. In Foxdale, temporary lights on the main road through the village near the Mines Road turn, 24 hours a day for property repairs there. And further down, there are temporary lights on the Balamoda Strait to the southern side of the South Barul Plantation, 24 hours a day for water main work. Jane has been on the WhatsApp as well to say the traffic lights on Bala Fletcher Road in Braddon are causing long delays going north. It has backed up to the roundabout, she says, where you turn for the hospital on Braddon Road. And looking at the airport, no problems to report with the flights and the sailings. The Mananan, the three o'clock departure from Douglas, expected to arrive into Liverpool shortly after six o'clock. And tonight's Mananan sailing to Liverpool, based on the latest weather forecast, that sailing has been rescheduled and will depart now at half past nine instead of half past eight. So passengers are asked to check in by a quarter to nine, expected arrival around midnight. Keyside Tyres and Service Centre with one year's free engine warranty from Castrol. Get more with Keyside. Now, a former minister says it's a real concern that government keeps getting bigger and is calling for more efficiency. Chris Robertshaw was MHK for Douglas East between 2010 and 2021 when he retired from politics. During his time in the Ireland's parliament, he called for reforms that would have seen government reduce its size. He's told Manx Radio's political correspondent Phil Gorn government isn't living within its budget. We were concerned about introducing the highest possible level of digital conversion so that we could make government more efficient. The idea was always that 
there would be less people needed then to deliver the services. And yet, it cannot be argued that our services are now better, and yet government keeps getting bigger and is not living within its uh, budget. And it's a real concern. I mean, you don't have to be somebody interested in politics to recognise now what an incredibly turbulent world we're in, whether it's the Western democracies or, or China or uh, Iran or, or Russia. Nothing but turbulence and debt. And therefore, the Isle of Man is now in a much more precarious world. And we have to, to make our government as efficient as we possibly can, as engaged as much as possible with the people of the Isle of Man, so that trust and confidence is built up. And we're not going to do it unless we reform government. And uh, why aren't we? I mean, that's, that, that's an interesting question that you pose. What, what, what's stopping current crop of MHKs from doing this? Or, it or the does previous seem to, one, or maybe... It does seem to have been shelved, doesn't it? Yes, uh, because, yeah. because when people come into politics, and almost always people are coming into politics in goodwill, with the best of intentions, and the desire to do good, and it doesn't matter whether that's a politician or a, bu a bureaucrat, a civil servant... That the intention is good. However, the structure creates the wrong purpose and direction. Uh, politicians, I, I've been watching it quietly from, from the back seat, as it were, watching politicians go native. In other words, they end up defending the status quo and defending their department. That's not actually their role. Former Minister and Douglas East MHK Chris Robertshaw speaking to Phil Gorn there. The time now, 21 and a half minutes past five. Manx Care has been asked to take action and change the way medical records can be shared across silos of the health system. The coroner of inquests has written to the health body following an inquest into the death of a Ramsey resident in November 2023. Tessa Hawley returns with this report. The 37-year-old man overdosed on the opioid oxycodone after taking it with other drugs. At the inquest into his death in May this year, a verdict of misadventure was recorded. Coroner James Brooks determined the man's death had been the unintended consequence of his deliberate action to take the medication which had been prescribed to him for pain relief. Whilst provision of medical care was found to be adequate, the coroner said there was clearly difficulties with the prescribing of medication to him over several years. Evidence given at the inquest showed it was very obvious that there was a complete inability for hospital doctors to have access to medical records held elsewhere than within the hospital. Coroners have the power to report to a person or body when they believe they may be able to prevent a future similar death. Coroner Brooks told the inquest that he believes there is a risk that arises from medical staff not having full access to a patient's records in terms of prescribing drugs. As a result, Coroner Brooks has written to Manx Care, highlighting the difficulties of sharing medical records between silos including the GP service, hospital and mental health services. He said by raising the issue it would at least be considered seriously by the organisation, adding there appears to be a problem and it appears that Manx Care in this case could take action to resolve that problem. He said whilst it's not for him to suggest how the issue should be solved, he'd like to think a solution can be devised that resolves the problem in its entirety. Manx Care has been given eight weeks to reply and set out what action it intends to take. Coroner Brooks added they are quite able, if they wish, to say they do not intend to take any action at all. But my experience is that generally Manx Care would take such a letter seriously and would set out the action that they intend to take. Manx Radio has invited Manx Care to respond. Tessa Hawley with that report there. Now, the former boss of a multi-million pound digital creative agency will be the keynote speaker at this year's UCM Research Festival. Island resident Jens Backham has worked with some of the biggest brands in media entertainment, including Disney, Universal Studios and the BBC. The festival will take place on Friday the 18th of October at the Nunnery in Douglas with the theme AI and Digital Sustainability and Wellbeing. Gail Corrin, UCM's Higher Education Manager, has been talking to Simon Richardson. 
This is our fifth year of our research festival. The idea of the festival is to be thought-provoking and to be intriguing and to, to, to really make accessible the importance of research, um, not just from an academic point of view, but also in everyday life. So Jan's doing our keynote opening speech because he's someone that's been very successful in business but is now applying himself to understanding how a small community like ours, a small nation state, can really excel in this very complicated world that we're, we're living in at the moment. So obviously there's, there's themes of AI in there, but there's also themes of the story we have to tell about ourselves to believe that we can thrive in, in a, a challenging world. So it's going to be an intriguing presentation and hopefully set the scene for the, the, the various other presentations that follow. He has got a pretty fascinating CV, hasn't he? He has. And, and those that you love reading CVs like that, you know, people who have clearly been curious throughout their entire professional life. So, you know, he's, 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 he's tackled all sorts of business uh, challenges in his life, but he retains this interest in, in, in I think, people and communities. So I think he's going to bring a lot of perspectives to, to the topic about the Ireland's future that perhaps no one's ever thought about before or perhaps not considered. Now the festival itself is free to attend. Uh, where does it take place? And I presume people will be required to register. Yeah, they, they, it's at our UCM Nunnery campus, which is a, a super place, as, as I'm sure many people know, to, to be for the day. Do register. It's, it's Just go to the UCM website and the research festival there. You register. It's on Eventbrite as you might expect. But yes, it is free but we'd just like to know who's coming. It also means that you can access the program which which is just as eclectic this year as it has been for the last four years which is great. Gail Corrin, UCM's Higher Education Manager, speaking to Simon Richardson there about the upcoming UCM Research Festival. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. And well, it may be wet and windy, but still plenty of sporting news to bring you, courtesy of Darren Timpson. Fast am I, Darren? Fast am I. Tonight's Manx Grand Prix qualifi- qualifying session may be cancelled. However, last night Wigan rider Rob Hodson was fastest in the opening session. The 34-year-old topped the timings of the RST Classic Superbike session with a lap of 123.453 miles per hour. Elsewhere, Danningham lapped fastest in the Milcrease Group Senior, whilst Italian Andrea Maiola topped the MGP Supporters Club Junior. TT Stalwarts Lee Johnston and John McGuinness were quickest in the PE Lightweight and Classic Senior classes, respectively. And finally, Dan Sale topped the two-wheeling Classics Classic Junior session. Right now, it seems tomorrow's qualifying session should be on as the forecast is so far looking good for racing. In cycling, the 2024 Tour de France Femmes concluded yesterday as two Manx riders took part. Becky Story of Team DSM Fermanick Post NL had to abandon the tour on the seventh stage of the event due to a broken collarbone. This meant the 25 year old could not compete in stage eight of the tour either and ultimately led to Story finishing in the standings where it did not finish. Lizzie Holden of t- Team UAE ADQ finished 78th in the general classification. However, the 26 year old managed the best finish of 28 in the third stage of the competition in Rotterdam. FC Alaman has confirmed three away fixture changes in the Northwest Counties Football League. It means the Ravens face Squires Gate on the 9th of November with kickoff at 1 p.m. Glossop North End on 8th of February next year, which will start at 2 p.m. And finally, Bursko on the 1st of March 2025, which will kick off at 1.30 p.m. The schedule amendments come after FC Alaman beat Litherland Remica FC 2 1 in Merseyside. And finally, the Isle of Man women's cricket team is currently in action against Malta in the final of a three match T20 series. The Manx side has already claimed victory of the series as they won the first two matches by nine wickets in both games. Darren Simpson, Guru Mayad, thank you. And that's all from Update this evening. Thank you for listening. Coming up next, whilst Phil has a brief summer break from Agenda, we take a dive into the archives a replay and replay a selection from some of our much-loved series, starting tonight with Days Gone By with John Kenyuk. Update will be back at 5 o'clock tomorrow.